Before our show begins, we would like to take the opportunity for you to learn more about the stars of our show. Well, by three. Mr. Beecham, 11th Earl of Warwick, welcome you. In this year of 1356, I have returned victorious from the war in France, where I served as a loyal commander to His Majesty King Edward. I could tell you of my adventures there, but today I wish to tell you of someone else's adventure, or rather a quest, that helped me rebuild Warwick Castle. I will tell you now of the Falconer's Quest. On my return from France, I saw a great need to replenish my collection of falcons, for I had taken many birds to war and, alas, few had returned. My falconers were tasked with rearing and raising as many hawks as possible to make the birds of Warwick the envy of a king. One day, a young lad arrived at the castle. He was called Hobby, and he was the son of a local fisherman. Hobby was presented to me, and he told me that since he was a child, he had watched in awe as my falconers had reared and trained my birds. How he loved to see the birds of Warwick fly majestically over the castle, and how heartbroken he was when so many did not return from war. I will go on a quest to bring to Warwick a collection of birds that will be the envy of a king. I laughed that our wishes were the same. Although he had no training with birds, I was charmed by his passion and asked him, out of pity, what reward he would want for this. Gold? Silver? I wish to stand as your master falconer and see the skies above the castle full of birds of prey. I told him, the skills and knowledge of a falconer are great and are passed down through the generations. Too much for the son of a fisherman. I wished him luck, but doubted I would see him again. Hobby thanked me and set forth on his quest. Hobby had grown up on the River Avon, and it was from his boat that he had often watched at night some very beautiful birds fly silently above the fields hunting for prey. They were barn owls. Many of my countrymen believe barn owls bring good fortune, and Hobby wanted to bring these birds to the castle, as he believed they would bring him luck on his quest. thought they were wonderful birds. He knew they had marvellous eyesight. He had seen them swoop down and catch their prey even on the darkest of nights.
These birds of prey have lived close to man for hundreds of years. With their heart-shaped face, they gather sounds and can hear the slightest movement of their prey as they fly silently. So light, feathers soft, silent in flight, this bird's a delight. Those small creatures that hide in the long grass should take heed. Beware the silence. Beware the long legs. Beware the talons. Fisherman's son ever charm a barn owl, but he did. I know you owls will bring me luck. On my quest, I will need to see like you, to hear like you. Then I can bring the birds back to Warwick. Come, my friends, come. Having won over the barn owls, his quest had truly started. Hobby left Warwick in search of more birds of prey. Crossing rivers and seas, discovering new lands. He saw a wondrous sight. Here in the northern lands, Hobby saw a most splendid sight. It was the largest bird in the land, a white-tailed sea eagle. Hobby had seen nothing like it before. He was so excited to see it in full flight with its massive, long, broad wings. This was to be a test for Hobby. A test of courage to meet such a grand bird. This great hunter will feed on carrion, or they may steal food from other creatures. All are in danger. Fish, rabbits, even other birds should watch out for the sea eagle. glorious sight of such a powerful bird. Hobby was honored to have met the sea eagle, and he felt great joy that this bird would soon grace the skies above Warwick. He reached a new land in the north and was pleased to find that the inhabitants, although strange in dress and manner, were friendly. Across the river, a strange figure appeared. They pointed at Hobby, then pointed to the sky. Then they summoned a bird. This huge, sturdy bird was a Stella's eagle. Those that cast their eyes on this magnificent bird are transfixed by its presence and power. Feathers, white 
wings and a blazing yellow beak and talons. The Stellar's Eagle, one of the largest and one of the toughest eagles in the world. Living in harsh and desolate lands where only the toughest will survive, it must endure freezing, cruel winters, living off frozen fish, or when it sees the chance, stealing food from other birds. Hobby found this bird to be very formidable. Hobby felt humbled to have met such a magnificent bird. Seeing this mighty eagle made him more determined to fulfill his quest and for him to become the master falconer at Warwick Castle. Hobby continued his quest. He learned of a group of birds that lived in a far off land that were known to some as the wolf pack of the skies. Unlike other birds of prey that hunted alone, these birds worked together to stalk, chase, trap, and kill their prey. It was not long before he met these wolves of the sky. They were the Harrisburgs. found the Harris Hawks to be clever and great fun. He understood why they were so popular in sport and hunting. They lived and hunted as a family with a strict hierarchy and he saw that the ruler of the family was a female. The young males will hunt, working together to flush out hidden prey, sometimes diving from the air or running on the ground. The females will deliver the final blow to the prey. Then they feast. of each other up to four birds high.
floor to show you this entertaining cast of Harris Books. He journeyed south, where he had heard about a strange-looking bird with enormous wings. For many days he searched, until one day he saw an unbelievable sight. It was an Andean condor. Legend said this was the biggest flying bird in the world. On seeing this magnificent bird, Hobby knew this to be true. Hobby was amazed to learn that the Andean condor had a wingspan of over 10 feet. He saw that it did not flap its wings to fly, but used the air currents to keep it in the air. These giants of the air live in high mountains, lowland deserts, and open grasslands along coastlines. They are not natural hunters. They like to scavenge for food. Claws are short, unlike an eagle, and they use them well to hold down any scavenged carcasses they feast upon. was ready to bring this large bird home, somehow. Hobby saw another striking looking bird flying towards him. It was a lamagaya, or a bone-eating vulture. A bird that can soar over the highest and most desolate mountains in Europe, scouring the land for carcasses and most important, bones. They will carry off huge bones with ease. Bones that weigh as much as they do, flying to a great height, and then, with extraordinary accuracy, drop them onto the rocks below so they smash into tasty, smaller pieces, ready to be feasted upon. He smiled at the thought of the shocked people of Warwick seeing bones dropping from the sky. On all his adventures, Hobby has found many wonderful and unique birds. But there was one he still wished to find. And as he was about to return to Warwick, his wish came true. This was the Bald Eagle. To Hobby, this bird conveyed power and freedom. A dominant and forceful bird that will face any kind of threat and never hold back. Fast, agile, brave, magnificent.
flapping its wings in flight, but soaring, holding them flat. Hobby was transfixed. an aggressive predator, a true hunter. It does not care how it gets its food. It will eat carrion, steal fish from other birds, or hunt for its own, often swooping down and grabbing the fish with its sharp talons. Old Eagle would rule the skies of Warwick. Having found the majestic Old Eagle, Hobby returned to Warwick and stood before me. He told me of his adventures, of the birds he had found. He reminded me of the reward he had wished for, to be my master falconer and care for the birds of Warwick. I reminded him that he also wished to see the skies above the castle full once more with birds of prey. Both Hobby and I were rewarded. above Warwick were full of many magnificent birds of prey, a sight that would indeed be the envy of the king. Warwick had a new hero, and I had a new master falconer, who was destined to protect and care for these beautiful birds. Hobby had fulfilled the falconer's quest. We have one world, one sky, and one future. Together, we must respect and cherish these magnificent birds. We hope you have enjoyed the Falconer's Quest. Until we meet again, my friends, until then, farewell.